Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum everyone. Today we'll be discussing the spiritual benefits of Hajj or the spiritual significance and meaning of Hajj. We all know that we are already in the month of Zulhijjah and this is the period when the Hajj or the pilgrimage to the Kaaba is performed. So the word Hajj literally means to travel to some place. But in Islamic terminology or in religious terminology, Hajj is the pilgrimage that a person is required to make to the Kaaba in Makkah at least once in his lifetime. So this is essentially the pilgrimage. And when the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him and his companions companions were performing the Hajj. Once some of his companions asked the Prophet, O Prophet, O Messenger of God, what are these rituals that we perform at Hajj? What are these rites that we are supposed to perform during the pilgrimage? And the Prophet peace be upon him responded, that these are the sunnah of your forefather Abraham. So this means that the various rituals that a believer, a pilgrim performs during Hajj are equivalent to reviving the sunnah of the prophet Abraham upon whom be peace. It is important to know that the prophet Abraham was born in the city of Iraq, in a city of Iraq called Ur. And he performed his dawah activities or the activity or the task of calling people to God, conveying the message of God in the region which is called or which was called Mesopotamia. And for this purpose, he traveled in this entire region and he even came to Makkah where he built the Kaaba. So when we perform Hajj, the various activities or rituals that we do during the pilgrimage, they are a symbolic reenactment of the various phases of the life of the Prophet Abraham. This is a very important point which we all have to bear in mind. And we have to also understand the life of the Prophet Abraham and the sacrifices that he made, the activities that he was involved in, in order to understand the meaning of Hajj, why we do Hajj, or what benefit are we to derive from this act of worship. So a believer, a pilgrim, goes to Makkah to perform Hajj. And he undertakes this journey for the sake of God Almighty, for the sake of his creator. And for this purpose, he takes out time and he spends wealth to go to Makkah and to witness the symbols of God. And these symbols of God in the Quran are called Shairullah. So we have to understand the meaning of symbols of God. What is it that we are, we are supposed to go and witness over there in Makkah during the pilgrimage? And God's symbols here means that this is the place, this is the region where the memories of God's true servants are associated. This is the place where if you go and if you have an awakened mind, you will be refreshed with reminders about how God's true servants spent their life. So we know that Prophet Abraham was born 4,000 years ago in the city of Ur and he conveyed the message of God to the people over there, to his community. And he traveled in the entire region of Mesopotamia, which is modern day Middle East. 
And for this purpose, he even went to Kaaba, to Makkah, to fulfill a very grand plan that God Almighty has had made. And when Prophet Abraham lived there, he also settled his family, his young infant son, Prophet Ishmael, and his wife, Hajra. So Prophet Abraham, Prophet Ishmael, and Prophet Ismail's mother, or Prophet Abraham's wife, Hajra, spent their life, or a part of their life, in the city of Makkah, or near the Kaaba, 4,000 years ago. And 2,000 years after them, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and his companions lived in this region. So this region is historically, spiritually, religiously extremely important because it became the place which was the center of the Prophet Abraham's religious activities. And not only that, later on, it went on to become the place where the final revelations of God Almighty came down upon earth, the place where the history of Islam began the place where innumerable incidents have come down in history books associated with the Prophet Muhammad and his companions. So this is a place, this is a region, the place where you go to perform the pilgrimage. You should be extremely aware, you should be knowledgeable enough to know, to understand that this is the place, this is the area, that particular place on earth where the history of God's pious servants unfolded, beginning with the Prophet Abraham 4,000 years ago, down to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and the Sahaba, the companions of the Prophet. This is why this region holds very special status in Islam. This, the precincts of the Kaaba have a very special position in Islam because of the history associated with this region, a very special spiritual religious history that is linked to this region. And when a person visits this place, when a person visits the Kaaba, he or she can notice, can sense the spiritual atmosphere in that region. He or she does not return from the Kaaba, from the pilgrimage of, of the Hajj, without having deep impressions left in him. And it is even said that if a person, if a pilgrim travels towards the Kaaba for the pilgrimage, then it is as if he, it is as if he started off fully immersed in dirt, but when he returned, when he returns from the pilgrimage, it is as if he has taken a bath in a river. He is refreshed and it's as if he's given a new spiritual life. So that is the importance of the pilgrimage and the importance of the place where the pilgrimage is perform performed. And this is why the Prophet, peace be upon him, even said that the Hajj is the most exalted form of worship, Afzal Ibadat. And we have to bear something very important in mind, and that is Hajj or the importance of Hajj for the pilgrim, for the believer, is not only in terms of performance of the rituals, the acts or the rites associated with Hajj. The pilgrim must also bear in mind the spirit of Hajj, the spirit of the rituals which he has to perform. So it is not that if you go to Hajj, if you travel for Hajj and you go to Makkah and you return from there, you will be refreshed spiritually or you would experience a spiritual transformation and you would have performed your duty towards Hajj. That is not true. Rather, you must also experience the feelings and the emotions that are meant to be experienced 
by a person while he is performing the rituals of the Hajj. The rituals of the Hajj have been prescribed or laid down so that we, the pilgrim, can experience the deep feelings that he is supposed to feel with respect to God Almighty, with respect to his religious responsibilities. So this is also a very important point that we have to bear in mind because often people only follow or think about the structure of the pilgrimage. They're focused only on the form, the outer, the outer structure. They don't think about the inner substance, the inner spirit, which is the essence, which is what make, makes Hajj the exalted, the exalted form of worship and which is what gives Hajj and the Kaaba a very important position in Islam. So let's move on and discuss the various rites of the pilgrimage and what they should mean for us, what they mean for us. The first and most important is that a pilgrim moves out of his own home, moves out of his own city and travels all the way to the Kaaba in Makkah. And this particular act, this particular experience is the beginning of the Hajj and it is very important because it is as if the pilgrim is moving out from his own world and entering the world of God Almighty. He's entering the world of his Lord, his creator. It is as if all this while you were only concerned about your own goals, you were busy fulfilling your plans and you were busy running after your desires. But when you plan for Hajj and when you move out of your city, your home and move towards, the, towards Makkah, in a way you are now doing something for the sake of God. You're fulfilling God's will. You're doing something to seek God's pleasure. You're moving out from a self-oriented life to a God-oriented life. So that's the beginning of Hajj. And when a pilgrim moves out of his city, moves out, moves out of his home, he's, he brims with the emotions that he's doing something for his Lord. He's doing something for the creator of this universe. All this while he was serving his own self, his own desire. But now he's got an opportunity to serve his Lord. And this emotion is something that washes his entire being with the spiritual divine light. And he travels with it all the way to the Kaaba in Makkah. And as he reaches Makkah, as he reaches the Hijaz, he's required to change his clothes. He's wearing stitched, tailored clothes and he's supposed to don or take up unstitched, plain clothes, which is called ihram. And this ihram is a symbolic of the simplicity in the lifestyle of the Prophet Abraham and Prophet Ismail and Hazrat Hajra. These people lived a very simple life and they devoted their everything for the cause of God Almighty. And simplicity is a symbol of a person who is not concerned about acquiring more and more in the world. He's not focused on material acquisition. He's more focused on spiritual development. He's more focused on, focused on building his spiritual personality, his character, his inner being, and not his outward self. So that's a very important lesson that the pilgrim receives the moment he enters Arabia. And after that, as he moves on, the very first and the most important or primary rite of the pilgrimage of Hajj is what is called Tawaf or circumambulation or moving about and around the Kaaba. And this particular act is so important. It is the depiction of the entire life of a believer. It is the portrait of a person 
whom God Almighty desires. Because what is the meaning of moving around the Kaaba? It means that, or it is symbolic of the fact that a person will lead a God-oriented life. His primary concern will be God. And as he moves on in his life, as he journeys through his life, he faces ups and downs. He wades through many problems and difficulties. But throughout that journey of his life, his emotional bond with God keeps on strengthening. His love for God keeps on increasing. These are the feelings that a pilgrim is supposed to have as he revolves around the Kaaba. He prays to God and he takes the pledge to God that he will always make God his primary concern. He prays to God to strengthen the bond between himself and his servant. So this is why when a pilgrim is performing the, the tawaf, the circumambulation, he keeps saying many prayers. And these prayers, according to scholars, are not supposed to be memorized words which you repeat without knowing their meaning. These are words which can be said in your own language. They can be uttered in your own language and they can be anything. It is just an outpouring of an emotion of a person who feels that he is not standing before the Kaaba, he is standing before the Lord of the Kaaba. That is the emotion that wells up in his heart as he moves about the Kaaba. And moving on after Tawaf, a very important rite is running between two hillocks, Safa and Marwa, which are located near the Kaaba. And Safa and Marwa also have a great history associated with them. We know that Prophet, Abraham's, Prophet Abraham settled his wife, Hajra, and the infant son, Prophet Ismail, in the barren desert of Arabia. And at that time, Makkah was an uninhabited area. It was not developed, it had no population, it had no urbanization, as existed in the city of Ur from where they migrated. So this was Hazrat Ahajra when, he, when she was settled and left by Prophet Abraham in the desert of Arabia, in the desert of Makkah. A time came when her infant son started crying out for water. And this is when she started running between two hillocks, Safa and Marwa, near her, in order to search desperately for water. And the meaning that this incident, this act gives us is that we have to trust God, or rather the Prophet Ibrahim's family showed us that their conviction in God, their trust in God Almighty which was so heightened, it was so intense that even when it came to leaving their comfortable homes in a city where they were born and brought up and had all facilities and coming to a place which had absolutely nothing, no human being, no human settlement, they were ready for it just because God Almighty had given them this command. So this is an example of trusting God, having conviction in God to the extent that you have the courage, you have the confidence to follow God's teachings, whatever be the situation. You don't feel that you'll be the loser if you follow the divine commandments. You know that God Almighty will sustain you through it and he has a plan for you. And after the Sai or the running between Safa and Marwa, we're supposed to sacrifice at Mina. Sacrifice also, sacrifice, sacrificing of an animal is also a symbolic act, the meaning of which is that you will devote yourself for the cause of God, even if it involves sacrificing your desires, sacrificing your emotions. 
sacrificing those things which are difficult for you to sacrifice. And the greatest sacrifice that we have to make is the sacrifice of our ego, sacrifice of our ideas of glory and greatness. We all, when we sacrifice the animal, we bow down before God and we say to God that we, are, we surrender to you, we submit to you, our everything is for you. But when we go back in human society and we have to confront human beings and deal with human beings, we become different. We are unable to tolerate any kind of hurt to our ego, any kind of offense to our pride. We're not ready to step down. We feel humiliated if somebody does not treat us in the way which we feel he should have treated us. So these ideas of glory and greatness and pride and honor and prestige, these really are the ones that we have to sacrifice as we lead our lives in this world. This is the real sacrifice that we ha have to make. And lastly, when a person has to enter the plane of Arafah, the plane of Arafah, that also holds deep spiritual significance because it is a scene which is very, very exceptional, very unprecedented because what happens on the day of Arafah is that people keep entering the plane of Arafah in groups and these people belong to different places, different countries, they're from different backgrounds. They keep coming and gathering in the plane of Arafah group after group. And this is really a depiction or a smaller manifestation of the Day of Judgment. Because the Quran says that when the trumpet will be blown, you'll see that everyone hastens, every human being is hastening towards his Lord. And the plane of Arafah really gives us an impression of this scene of the Day of Judgment, when there will be no distinction between human beings. We'll be all human being. We'll be all a creature of God. We, we, on the Day of Arafah, we are wearing plain clothes. Nobody is a king. Nobody is a commoner. Nobody is rich. Nobody is poor. Everyone is same. Everybody looks the same. And it's as if we're all rushing towards our Lord on the Day of Judgment. And this is a moment wherein you make yourself extremely conscious about the reality of death and the afterlife. That one day you will have to, in the same way, meet your Lord along with the rest of humanity. So that is a deep kind of lesson that we learn. It's about what is eternal and what is temporary in this world. It really resets our priorities. And lastly, we also have to remember that Hajj is, as I said, an enactment of the various phases of the life of the Prophet Abraham. And the most paramount activity or the task of the Prophet Abraham was Dawah, or conveying the message of God to all humanity, conveying to humanity the purpose of their creation what their God Almighty wants from them and how to establish a relationship with God. This was his greatest concern. So when we return from Hajj, don't think that our Hajj is over. It's all, it has all come to an end. Rather, this is the time when we have to convert our symbolic sacrifice at Hajj in the Kaaba at Makkah into a real sacrifice. We have to utilize all our abilities for the task of conveying the message of God to people around us. That is essentially the goal, the mission with which we all have to return after having performed the pilgrimage. This will be a true reenactment re and continuation of the mission of the Prophet Abraham and the Prophet Muhammad upon them be peace. And lastly, I want to also recommend this very important book called Hakikate Hajj by Maulana Wahiduddin Khan, which means the spirit of Hajj, the reality of Hajj. And it's a very transformative book. If you read about it, you will really want to go to Makkah and perform the pilgrimage. It fills you with deep emotions. It tells you about the purpose of your life, it tells you 
how Hajj reconnects you with your Lord and what goal the Hajj gives to you. And the author has also shared with all of us his own personal experiences when he went to perform the Hajj himself back in the 1980s.